Here's Jay Pat, one half of the rink wide duo with Andrew Watt. They were up late last night because seven thirty start plus shootout. Jeff, wakey wakey. I hope you got your beauty rest. Yeah, I think I looked ahead at the schedule. Nineteen games to go. There's only one more seven thirty start, and that is uh, in Anaheim. I believe uh, the California teams they like their seven thirty starts, but uh, at Rogers Arena. And I know this is uh, a national television window, and so Monday games at home have been seven thirty, but. Yeah, you just kind of feel like you're inviting overtime and then the shootout. And so, yeah, it was a late night, but uh, it's all right. Uh, lots to chew on. The Canucks, uh, they're out of the playoffs, but there are still many storylines here and uh, saw a bunch of them come to the forefront again last night against the Preds. One of the storylines that's coming to the forefront is that with Thatcher Damko and Young Seeloffs, we're pretty damn good. And back-to-back wins here, three of the last four. They got Anaheim coming up. Any chance to like, drop below the Montreal Canadiens or above the Montreal Canadiens, if you will, uh, in the league standings by points percentage? Uh, what's your sense of how good they can be here in the final quarter? Well, their schedule is awfully soft. They've got a heavy diet of Chicago, Anaheim, and Arizona. They've got Ottawa coming in, and we saw what happened last night. Although, how did that happen? Ottawa just gets absolutely spanked in Chicago. Didn't see that one coming because the Sens have been playing better. But it is a soft schedule, and they're getting saves. That You're right. Like More than anything, they're getting the saves that they weren't getting between Christmas and Demko's return, or I guess just prior to that was Silas in his debut. But certainly credible National Hockey League goaltending and I had to do a little digging here, but was kind of surprised, maybe even a little shocked, to find that Archie Silovs is the first 21-year-old goaltender in the Vancouver Canuck organization to post three victories in a season since Kirk McLean back in 1987-88. It's been 35 years. He's only the fourth guy that has done that. So to think about this as a sixth-round pick in the 2019 draft to be in the NHL. He's 3-2 and two now in his five games and, you know, staring down NHL shooters. I know the Preds aren't the best team in the league, but still uh, had to come up with a game-winning save after Elias Pettersson had scored in the shootout and Silas goes 3-3 three for three in the shootout, so he uh, mows down the Predator shooters. And just, I guess, a little more modern context to that statistic about 21-year-olds winning games. Like, it is rare. Thatcher Demko hadn't touched NHL ice. He made his debut in a one-off as a 22-year-old, and then it was another year before he became, remember, they had to move pieces around. He basically forced their hand to trade Anders Nilsson so that he could become the backup midseason. So I went back and I looked. In the last 10 years, this is the list of 21 or under goaltenders that have had success in the National Hockey League. Andre Vasilevsky, Carter Hart, Alexander Gordiev, John Gibson, UC Soros, who they saw last night for the Nashville Predators, Spencer Knight, obviously, was a high draft pick here in 2019. But like that's pretty good company to be keeping, mm-hmm. you know, as you work your way. And it's no guarantee, but it tells you that he's on the same track as some of these guys who were uh, high, far higher pedigreed, higher draft picks, uh, given more of an opportunity in an early age, and, and for some of them behind better teams. And here's Arter Silovs just doing his thing. And so it does beg the question, what's in his future and what's best for his future? Because it does look like the backup job is going to be open once again here at the NHL level next season. And he's pretty well, quiet, too. Like, he's, my... not, he's not loud and net. He, he's, he's calm. He Absolutely. Doesn't, the, the moment is uh, too big for him, you know? No, and you think, uh, you know, he faced the Boston Bruins. I know that they lost that hockey game, but he held the Bruins to two goals before Lena Solmark scored. Uh, you know, I, I, there's just a ton to build on here. He's seen the Rangers and the Bruins already in his five games. Yeah. And as you're right, like he hasn't looked overwhelmed. I mean, the Ranger game was his debut. Maybe a little bit of nerves there, but uh, otherwise, uh, he's been sharp. He's been solid. Uh, Canucks, I think, are starting. You're seeing that they're starting to instill some of this structure now that Rick Tockett has been preaching for a while, and that's going to help the goaltenders. And obviously the penalty kill, it goes hand in hand. I think they're getting saves on the penalty kill that maybe they weren't early on, but also uh, it just to the eye, the penalty kill looks a little stouter than it has at any point this season. And, of course, the bar is awfully low in that department, but they do seem like they're making some headway, and they were disciplined against the Preds. only took the one penalty, J.T. Miller, in the first period, and they were able to kill that one off. So what's your prescription here, Jeff? What do you think is going to play out over the final 20 for Siloffs and, and pointing forward to next year? Are we starting to think he's going to be a youthful backup to Thatcher Demko next year? Well, he's up on an emergency recall because I do think this was calling Delia's start and then Delia came down with an illness. But again, I'm not sure that, you know, we saw with JT Miller in his week to week and then made the miraculous return. Who knows? honestly what's going on behind the scenes with his hockey club but the fact that Abbotsford was at home it was an easy call to make 
And I like the fact that they didn't veer from their plan. I think that was going to be a call and deal start. Regardless, Demko had played three since his return. He'd been busy, faced a lot of shots. The emotional win over Toronto on Saturday, I think it made sense to just get him a night off. It turned out that it was Silov. So uh, we'll see how that works in the short term here with 19 to go. And, of course, Savitzford will be on the road. The Canucks will be out on the road. It won't be as simple as just making the phone call and getting them in on game day. But I like the fact that, you know, with very little warning, again, you know, nothing seems to phase this guy. Just rolls into town, suits up, and, and away he goes and delivers the victory for the Vancouver Canucks. I still, in my mind, feel at he's turning 22 here in a couple of weeks. So next year will be his 22-year-old season. And again, just looking at the Demko model, I still think he would benefit from another full year in the American Hockey League, being the guy and playing 50 to 55 games down there. Hopefully, Abbotsford can get on a playoff run this year and he can gain experience uh, in that as well. But... I, I'm not completely ruling out the fact that he forces their hand and they get to a conclusion that there's no better option here, and certainly at his price point, because I think for the Canucks, uh, the other option is to go back into the market and try to find a you know, a discount version, probably veteran guy that has been around the block a few times, but they've got so little money to spend that any dollars that they can save, and they, they try to do that with Spencer Martin, and, uh, you know, I, I still think Spencer Martin probably could have been a capable backup had Demko been healthy, but once he got thrust into the starter's role, uh, it just it proved too much, and it kind of swallowed him up, and so I don't know where they go. Spencer Martin's under contract for one more year with the hockey club, so, you know, added to a long list of intrigue, of uh, positional wants and needs and, and decisions that they're going to have to make, but I do think that Arthur Silovs has entered the conversation with his performance here and they could do worse than having this guy uh, as the backup to Thatcher Demko because we saw what happened when Demko went down. They really didn't have a credible NHL option. Yeah, the uh, the guy needs to play more than 20 starts, and yeah. that you're, you're relying on injuries to Thatcher Demko to, to get him above 20 starts next year. So uh, wholeheartedly agree. Are we starting to see some trust in the Russian kids? Uh, you know, Kravtsov's out there for the game-tying goal, and not really as fall as a breeze ball giveaway more than anything else, but he does get that late shift in overtime to his off. Um, and Pod Colson with the tip goal and, and just some renewed confidence for Pod Colson. Are the kids starting to come along a little bit? I think so. Uh, I, I thought Vasily Pod Colson after the recall right out of the All Star break, you know, he scored in his second game at Madison Square. He looked like he had some jump. The coach had high praise for him. And then I thought, like a lot of young players, his play kind of trailed off a little bit as they came off the road and came back home. But, boy, I would say the last few games, uh, he has been assertive. He's winning his puck battle. He's spending most of his shifts in the offensive zone. And it was nice to see him get a payoff. And I think there was a lot that was instructive in that goal. He wins a battle along the boards, makes a play to get the puck deep, and then it you know works his way back to the point. He spins off his check, gets to the front of the net. And you saw Jeremy Lozon really had trouble. I mean, it was a sort of one-on-one battle in the high slot, and Lazon ends up losing his footing because he can't move Pod Colson, and then Pod Colson's able to tip the puck home, and, you know, you got to feel good for him. Uh, again, it, there's not enough time left in this season for him to have any sort of goal total that's going to blow us away, but no, would it be nice no. if, if this was the start with 19 to go and he plays them all? You know, can he get on any sort of run here just to regain some of that goal-scoring confidence that he showed at this time last year? But, yeah, to your point... It, yeah, they gave up a tying goal. I mean, that, that's a game that they probably should have been able to lock down, but these are the Canucks that we know breakdowns happen. But the fact that Pud Coles and, and Kravtsov were out on the ice with whatever it was, three minutes to play in the third period, and then both got shifts in overtime, I thought, good for Rick Tockett. I think uh, at other times and other coaches, right. those guys would have been planted and we wouldn't have seen them again until the next practice or the next game. And Tockett stretched the bench, and those guys got shifts in overtime. And so that was a good sign. And, in fact, they both had decent looks in overtime. Put Colson off the right side, and uh, Kuzmenko set up Kravtsov coming in on the, the left. And, you know, both of them could have ended the game there. It didn't happen. And then, you know, I'm curious. The shootout didn't go beyond three. But I wondered, like, at mm -hmm. what point would they have entered the conversation about shootout opportunities? And there were other guys, certainly, that uh, would have been in the mix there as well. But uh, Elias Pettersson... Uh, kind of took matters into his own hand, as he has done an awful lot here of late. And so uh, they didn't need anybody beyond the third shooter. They just needed one more save, and they got that from Arthur Silas. Whole question, I'm Elias Pettersson is good, yes or no? <laughs> uh, man, he is, uh, he's digging in these days. And I know that uh, his name wasn't all over the score sheet, but opens the scoring and finishes the scoring in the shootout. And so absolutely, uh, you know, ha has a role in the outcome of this hockey game. And I don't know about you guys, but it was funny. Prior to the game yesterday, I went for a, 
uh, a long walk. I need to go for more walks. Uh, fresh air is good for you. We're going on your steps like Drance. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And part of it was I wanted to listen to episode six of Scotty's uh, West Coast Express, and I hadn't had a chance over the weekend. So I, on my walk, I went for the – I'm listening, and it's all about sort of the rise of Marcus Naslund in that uh, season that he pushed for the, the Rocket Richard. And five minutes into the hockey game, did that not look like a Marcus Naslund goal from Elias Pettersson? Left shot Absolutely. guy – had some space, and just picked his spot, and it didn't matter. UC Soros was in great position, it deflected off his shoulder and in, and it just took me back in time. That was a Marcus Naslin goal, and uh, we know that Elias Patterson's got it. He's got the big one-timer, but he can also put some real zip on that wrist shot, and that uh, was uh, another indication last night. So 30 and 300 points in the NHL, all rolled into one scoring play. Nice milestones for him, but uh, really, he's just getting started. And that waffling puck, yep. he almost lacrossed in, you know, like just, yep. he's just got it all. He's just <laughs> Even the area off the half wall there. No, absolutely, Jeff. Great shout on the Naslin comp. Uh, let's ask you the real Bodog poll question today. Who gets to 40 goals? Kuzmenko? Patterson? Neither? Both? What do you think? I think PD will get there. Uh, again, the soft schedule and... I just I have to believe the way that he's playing, the level at which he's playing, there's going to be a few more big nights for him left uh, in the season. And so I, I do think that the 100-point thing is something that uh, you know he's well aware of. Uh, he's a pretty cerebral guy. I think he knows where he sits and all those types of things. And he tried to downplay the, uh, the personal milestones last night. But, yeah, I mean, he's right there knocking on the door of 40 goals and 100 points. And I think he's going to get to both of them. Kuzmenko... Uh, there's no reason he couldn't get to 40, but, I mean, every goal from this point forward is gravy for this guy. He's at 29, and he'll get to 30 soon, and I hope it happens on the homestand so that uh, we get to see one of those great celebrations of his. Uh, I- I'll say, though, that, I mean, my expectations for Kuzmenko, top end was 25, would have been an incredible season. He's going to be at 30 here, and who knows where he tops out. I'll say that it's Pedersen and Pedersen alone, but Kuzmenko mm-hmm. will give it a he'll give it a pretty good run. Uh how about this fourth line with Oman and Joshua? They they both had hiccups earlier in the year, and including Oman going back down to uh, Abbotsford. Um, but they've been good of late, and when boys, they're good, to, they're good. You know, they're really yeah. good and, and really noticeable. And uh, you know that's been something that I think you know Talkett talked about when he first got here, and uh, the proof has been in the pudding with those two players. And I think finally it's taken him 17 games, but he now knows that Dakota is the first name and Joshua is the last because uh, he has transposed them a couple of times. But, you know, <laughs> we'll, hey, we'll give him that. Uh, but interesting, Matt, your label of fourth line, uh, the danger for me is that they're going to see this as something more than a fourth line. And in fact, the way they're being deployed and used at ice time, Pod Colson and his group, really, they're the fourth right. line. And you've got two top 10 draft picks in Pod Colson on the one side and Kravtsov on the other. Uh, the potential is certainly there for, there for them to rise up the ranks over time. Uh, how it plays out over these final 19, I guess it doesn't really matter to me. It's all about showcase and audition. And nobody had less than 10 minutes of ice time last night, so nobody can really grumble that somebody got hosed and you know they're not giving these guys the, the run that they need. Uh, but I do worry just a little bit that this is going to be viewed as something more than a fourth line. And I think on a good team, yes, those guys sort of fit the role. Amon's got the defensive conscience and presence and had some polish for a young guy that had played professionally over in Sweden. And look, they look like they've hit on something in Dakota Joshua. I mean, credit to the pro scouts, and I know Ryan Johnson and Trent Cull had seen him a little bit uh, in the American Hockey League. They saw something there. Nine goals in 60 games for a guy that limited ice time. And last night, like, that's a Dakota Joshua goal and or game, and I hope that, you know, they work with him and show him the video and all that kind of stuff because it wasn't just the goal, but the goal itself. Like, Amon makes a nice pass. You know, I think a lot of guys coming in on the rush would have just hammered that puck as hard as they could. He pulls it around Ryan McDonough and snaps it home like there was a little finesse there and some poise on the part of Joshua. But it was also, it was four shots. It was seven hits. And that's a pretty complete hockey game for a guy that uh, is in that role. And a little bit of penalty killing time as well. They only had the one shorthanded situation. So, yes, you're seeing some growth in Dakota Joshua. He got the immediate coach bump, scored in two of the first three games under Talkett. And I think Talkett, you know, he admitted he didn't really know much about this guy, but big body and wanted him to wall work and all those things. And then he hadn't scored since the Columbus game ahead of the All-Star break. So it had been a little while since he had produced offense. But Niels Amon, who had gone much of the season without much offense, 
goal the other night against Toronto and then is the playmaker last night. So, you know, it does look like he's responding to the ice time and the opportunity that he's getting here. And they're playing with an offensive guy in Connor Garland. And so it's a bit of a unique mix on that line. But I think Garland gives them a little bit of you know, offensive chops and just a guy that's going to try to be creative. But on the Joshua goal, uh, Hughes gets the puck to him on. It's him on to, to Joshua. And Connor Garland wasn't in the equation on that scoring play. Uh, but I'm curious to see... Because, yes, it's nice to see a little bit of an offensive burst from these guys, and you want that. You can't just have guys out there wearing the uniform. Everybody's got to find ways to contribute. But I just think you heard Patrick Alvin on Friday when they traded Curtis Cesar, and he name-checked him on and said, you know, basically had outplayed him. And the other thing is we want more offense from our fourth line. But my question is, is that your fourth line? And in the short term, it's not right now. But I do think big picture over time as they build out this roster – and those guys remain, yeah. you know, I hope that they kind of find their level and can contribute as fourth liners on this hockey club. Yeah, no, absolutely. You still need another centerman above them on yes. uh, yeah. for next year. You're going to get McCaff and who knows, maybe even Tanner Pearson back. So I think you're going to have a domino so you effect. Think about a it. nice center, like a true third line center with Pod Colson and Kravtsov on either side of them. Mm-hmm. I'm interested. Let me see that. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, let's remember uh, Di Giuseppe is playing with Miller. McCaff is going to replace Di Giuseppe on whatever line you want to call it. I would suspect that Tanner Pearson, if he is fit to play and still a Vancouver Canuck, may well uh, figure as a a third liner as well. And you're right. uh, You need a third line center. At the very least, you need a third line center. You may need a second line center uh, if you don't think uh, Miller can hold up to all the air or you don't add a hybrid for Miller, if you will. Uh, But... uh, those dominoes all to come here over the course of the summer. Jeff, marvelous stuff. Thank you for this. We'll catch up Thursday, my friend. All right, guys. Thanks.